Welcome back to Thimbleberry U. I'm John Jagge, joined again by Amy Wallace from Thimbleberry Financial. Great to be with you as always, Amy. Jag, it's fun to be talking to you. This is an interesting topic today, and that is when the client and advisor relationship doesn't work. So before we get to the negative, let's start on a positive note and come at this from the other side. From your perspective, Amy, what makes a client advisor relationship work well? Yeah, first of all, I should probably explain how we work just from a context perspective. Okay. In our work with clients, there's really two bodies of work that we do. The first is the financial planning. And how I describe that in JAG, you talk about your wife often enough that I'm going to say, you know, you and your wife have a vision of what you want the rest of your lives to look like. Sure. And because you're not the same people, they're not going to be the same vision. They may be similar. For some couples, they're vastly different. (laughs) For others, they're, they're pretty similar, but with some differences. Communication is key. Yeah. So we can take that vision and stick it on a puzzle. Okay. Right? That's what puzzles are. They're pictures. And in this first body of work, our job, as we see it, is to put the pieces of the puzzle together in the most efficient and effective manner so that that vision you have can be as beautiful as it can be. And the puzzle pieces are the things you've done so far. They're your home, your business, your savings into different kinds of accounts, like A retirement account, like a 401k might be one type of puzzle piece, but a Roth IRA would be another, Mm -hmm. you know, um, checking savings. It's your tax situation today. There's all these different puzzle pieces and they all have to work together to make that vision work. Okay. So really it's all about strategy. The second body of work is really the wealth management. And for us, if somebody came to us just to invest money and doesn't want to do the planning piece, the answer is no, Hmm. just not how we work. Okay. And... We have to make sure that the investments align with the plan. Makes sense. So that's how that ties together. It's really for us, our philosophy is we help our clients grow money for a purpose as opposed to just growing money to grow money. I like it. Okay. With that said, after we get through kind of the initial recommendations from then, Every time we work with a client from a meeting perspective, they get a letter that has our action items, their action items, and a summary of what we've talked about. Wow. Responsibility on both sides. Absolutely. And I think that's, you just hit the nail on the head with responsibility on both sides. Sometimes people think that in the client advisor relationship, the advisor is the one that has all the responsibility. And we definitely take responsibility. We just also think the client has a level of responsibility in this relationship too, whether that's to provide correct data, provide complete information so that we can do our work. And this is going to be different for different firms. Yeah. And so with one of the things that might be different with us, you know, given this strategy is our client, our communication and relationship is very collaborative. Whereas with another firm that, maybe manages money, the clients may tend to give much more of the direction. Mm -hmm. So really it comes down to communication and communication is a two-way street. We respond to clients in a timely manner. We expect them to respond to us in a timely manner. Yeah, that's fair. And if my team comes to me and says, I'm not hearing back from so-and-so, we've tried many different ways over this time frame. I'm going to reach out to the client, whether that happens you know, in a meeting or over email or phone. And we'll have that conversation that that is an expectation that we had discussed. Mm -hmm. And then I think just because of our focus on advice via the financial plan, we have clear expectations around being advice oriented and proactive in the relationship. And that, again, goes both ways with communication. So, for example, with advice, that planning piece is as important as the investing. And in being proactive, if something big is going to happen for someone, you know, whether that's a big job change they know is coming or that they're looking for or that they're moving to another country, (laughs) that they tell us about that in advance and that we have conversations about what that means. Okay, so this explains and outlines how a good client relationship works in the case of Thimbleberry Financial. And you've started to already answer my next question, but I'm going to ask it anyway, which is, When does the relationship not work and how do you make that determination? I know for me as a small business owner, when I have clients that the relationship isn't working, number one, I hate to fire a client because that's potential revenue out the door. But number two, I'm also a people pleaser. I try to find a way to make the relationship work. So getting rid of a client as a small business owner for me can be a really difficult thing. 
How do you get to a point where you determine that this client relationship is not working, Amy? Yeah, uh, such a good question. It, well, first, it usually comes down to communication. Mm -hmm. We don't want to make this determination. And what we will tend to notice is that a client's not engaged. Okay. They're not responsive to us. They also, if we're going to make that decision, often don't take action or aren't accountable. Okay. Right. I mentioned those letters that have our action items and such. If things are consistently not being done, we're reaching out, we're not hearing back, we're not getting there's questions about it, then we can't help. Yeah. And so for us, we need to add enough value that it makes sense to continue to work together. Okay. And if we don't feel we're adding value, then we're kind of stuck. And really, you asked, you know, who determines, I think you asked who determines that. Mm -hmm. Either side can determine. You know, we review the clients in our practice regularly to look for flags around this and just to make sure we're adding appropriate value and looking for more opportunity to add more value, really. Right. What could we be doing better for this client? We want that long term interactive relationship. So, you know, we may ask or the client may say, hey, I don't feel like this is working. But usually if in the rare case that happens, we have an idea because they're probably also on our radar. That the relationship just isn't working for mm -hmm. one way or another. So how does that relationship end if the client says, hey, you know what? This isn't for me. Yeah. Luckily, it doesn't happen too often, but essentially it's the same thing. We find out that you know, they're leaving, we're going to cancel our financial planning agreement that we have. Mm -hmm. And the client's going to transfer their accounts out. So that's more straightforward, Amy. A client says, hey, this relationship isn't working the way I'd like it to for whatever reason. Again, not often, but it does happen. You know, here's how we exit the agreement. I'd imagine it's a little bit different when you are the one that decides, hey, this relationship isn't working. You know, it's a little bit different. Um, the client doesn't always have to let us know, right? They can go to another advisor and fill up paperwork and transfer things. Yeah, true. And then, especially with financial planning, then we need to have a quick conversation to say, okay, yep, we're canceling this. But okay. if it's us, we're going to either have a conversation or we might end up sending it out in a letter saying, hey, in a recent review, we figured out it doesn't seem like we're really helping you adequately. Mm -hmm. And in that, we will let them know that we're canceling the financial planning engagement and we'll send them statements for their account so that and instructions on how to take those to a new advisor and use them to transfer their accounts elsewhere. Okay. And is there a refund at that point? Great question. Um, sometimes it depends on how much of the financial planning work we've done. So if you've done more of the work, less money comes back, you do less work, more money comes back. Makes sense. Yep. And then, of course, the question that everybody's going to want to know about in this era of data and privacy, if you do part ways with the client, what happens to the information you have on file about them? Yeah, well, it definitely has to stay on file. Okay. I know that sometimes people hope that an advisor could just get rid of that. But we have compliance rules mm -hmm. per the regulators that we have to follow. And so we need to maintain all of those records for a period of time. I think the important takeaways from today's conversation, Amy, are that, number one, when you work with Dimbleberry Financial, it's a cooperative relationship. It's, I don't want to say symbiotic because that sounds a little <laughs> cliche, but, but it is because you are both benefiting from each other in a way that you're working together as a team to help somebody reach their financial goals short, medium, long term. I think that's really important to say that this is not just check the box. Hey, I got my financial advisor. I, they, they're handling my, my retirement stuff and I'll talk to them once a year and that'll be the end of it. Like it really is an interactive process. And Taking that care and that attention to detail that you and your team do at Thimbleberry is really important. And I'm sure, Amy, for your regular clients, the ones that value the relationship that you have with them, that's why, because of this uh, approach that you have. I think so. You know, we have process. We believe in process. And process doesn't mean that the relationship isn't important. They work hand in hand. And I think having process actually makes the relationship better as long as we can execute. And so there's, yes, a two-way street in that communication. And that you're not afraid to part ways with a client if the relationship is not working for either side. Absolutely. So with that in mind, Amy, if somebody wants to talk to you about their financial future and working with you at Thimbleberry Financial, how do they find you? Yes, they can give us a call at 503-610-6510, or they can find us online at thimbleberryfinancial.com. Good stuff as always, Amy. We'll talk again soon. Yes, sounds great, Jag. 
Registered representative, securities offered through Cambridge Investment Research, Inc., a broker-dealer, member FINRA SIPC. Investment advisor representative, Cambridge Investment Research Advisors, Inc., a registered investment advisor. Cambridge and Thimbleberry Financial are not affiliated.